Time for the latest earnings outlook now with Research Director Shiraz Meehan. Shiraz, it's been a while since you and I have sat down to talk about earnings at all. The Q2 season is officially in the books now, so how would you characterize it? Uh, very good. Uh, this was uh, a very positive earnings season. In fact, if I go back uh, even longer than a year, uh, this stands out on a number of fronts. And I, I have a couple of uh, slides to share uh, with you and the viewers. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the final scorecard for the quarter. And just for the record, this morning's Kroger report uh, was the final uh, S&P 500 earnings report for Q2. Now we have officially closed the books on it. From next week onwards, we'll start counting uh, the Q3 earnings season, but on that a little later. As you can see, 8.1% earnings growth on 4.4%. Uh, top line gains, 62.5% uh, beating earnings, 58.3% uh, coming ahead of top line estimates. Uh, this slide compares the earnings growth in Q2 and revenue growth in Q2 to what we saw in Q1 mm -hmm. and also the four quarter average. The four quarter average is through the first quarter of 2014. So as you could see, uh, the growth rate is materially better. Uh, and in this slide, uh, we show the uh, beat ratios. Uh, so the, the earnings beat ratio is roughly along historical lines, uh, but the, uh, the, the top line uh, beat ratios uh, are, are materially uh, to, the, uh, to, to, the, to the positive side. So uh, this morning that you referred to is Thursday, September the 11th, in case people are following along on the calendar. Having said all of that now, how would you say or what would you say was the biggest thing that surprised you in the Q2 season? Uh, you know, a couple of things. Uh, number one, uh, as, we, as we showed in this, in this last slide, is the, uh, is, the, is the greater proportion of companies beating top line estimates. Uh, so one could, uh, one could uh, interpret higher beat ratios as reflection the of uh, lower Director estimates uh, uh, at, at, the, at the start of the earnings season. But as we saw uh, in the earlier slides, the growth rate, the top line growth rate uh, was fairly strong as well. Uh, so this top line improvement is, is, is one positive thing that, that stood out to me. The second was the breadth of the improvement. It wasn't driven by one specific sector. For a very long time, we were seeing strength in finance driving the aggregate picture. That wasn't the case this time. Uh, in fact, finance was a laggard. Uh, it, was, uh, it was holding uh, the rest of the, uh, the, the aggregate numbers back. Uh, the breadth was, 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 very, was very wide, and there was an improvement, and uh, uh, some ever so slight improvement on the, on the guidance front, too. So, uh, so, so those were some of the key elements that stood out to me. Slight improvement in guidance, although overall guidance still on the weak side, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Guidance is still weak. The overwhelming majority of companies uh, that are guiding are guiding lower. What does that mean for the Q3 outlook? Yeah, the, the, the outlook for Q3, uh, I have a slide uh, to share uh, with folks. Uh, it, it provides a summary view uh, of, uh, of Q3. 3.1% total earnings growth. Uh, on 1.4 percent revenue gains and, and, and slightly uh, positive margin gains uh, in Q3 estimates, as has been the pattern for close to two years, uh, have been coming down. They came down for Q3 as well. This 3.1 percent growth is down from close to 6 percent growth at the beginning of the quarter. Uh, but the positive thing is that the pace and magnitude of negative revisions has not been as pronounced as we have been seeing over the last four to six quarters. So the same trend, the same pattern, uh, but less pronounced and less negative. At this point, would you say that earnings are going to be a driver of stocks? going forward? Uh, I, I, I sincerely hope so. Q2 was materially better. Uh, many argue that this was a bounce back from the extremely low levels that expectations and the estimates had fallen to uh, after Q1. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, uh, the Q3 earnings season will be the first normal one, uh, oh. quote unquote normal one, to give us a true picture of how the, uh, the, the earnings 
story is unfolding. So yes, we'll know for sure uh, once uh, this earnings season unfolds uh, in mid-October as to how good the earnings uh, picture actually is. All right. Well, now that we're in our new studio, I promise we'll sit down and talk about earnings more often. Sure. Uh, in this setting or maybe even over at the new anchor desk. We'll have to see how that plays out. In the meantime, don't forget you can follow Shiraz Earnings Trends commentaries on our website, Zax.com, if you're watching this out in syndication land. So get on over to the homepage of Zax.com. You can link to it right from there. And he, during earnings seasons, he also provides day-to-day -day commentary dealing with the trends, changes in his thinking, changes in the trends for earnings and the stock market in his Ahead of Wall Street column, also to be found on Zax.com. With Shiraz, I'm Terry Ruffalo.